And this is in response to those in the nutrition world, or at least the ideas in the nutrition world, that you should keep your blood sugar below a certain level. Because some people may hear this and say, but won't eating fruit and honey spike my blood sugar? Yes, it will. Why do you care? Show me one good study that really proves, that really illustrates that raising your blood sugar like that is causal. There's an association between higher levels of blood sugar, but are these just people who have baseline metabolic dysfunction and that is why their blood sugar is spiking postprandially? So you're seeing the metabolic dysfunction. Is it the high sugar? I don't buy it because look at me, look at my labs. My hemoglobin A1C is lower than 98% of carnivores out there. I guarantee you my hemoglobin A1C, the average blood sugar I have over the last 90 days eating 300 grams of carbohydrates on a lot of days is lower than most ketogenic dieters. Explain that. Riddle me that, please, okay? I'm not getting excess glycation. I'm not damaging my endothelium. My HSCRP is low. My fibrinogen is low. You can find all of this in the blood work podcast. My fasting insulin remains low. So this study, I think, is impossible to ignore. The relevance of glycemic index, glycemic load for body weight, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. What you find is that the strongest intervention studies typically find little relationship between GI and GR, GR being glycemic response, essentially glycemic load, and physiological measures of disease risk. Even for observational studies, I'm quoting from the abstract, the relationship between glycemic index and glycemic load and disease outcomes is limited, right? Thus, the abstract I'm reading, it is unlikely that the GI of a food or diet is linked to disease risk or health outcomes. Other measures of dietary quality, I agree with that, not this next statement, such as fiber or whole grains, <laughs> disagree with that, maybe more likely to predict health outcomes. But yes, dietary quality, fiber or whole grains, no. But I'll read that last statement again. Thus, it is unlikely that the glycemic index of a food or diet is linked to disease risk or health outcomes. That is a strong statement. If your blood sugar goes to 140 milligrams per deciliter after you eat some pineapple and honey, with your meat and organs, celebrate it <laughs> because that is insulin at work. That is insulin affecting your hormones positively, affecting your glutathione positively, affecting your kidney positively. That is not disease process. There is a, and I use this word carefully, there is a cult within the nutrition world of keeping your blood sugar below a certain ceiling. I've pointed this out before, but I have heard preeminent people in the nutrition and health space say, a quote, don't care what you eat as long as you keep your blood sugar below a certain value. And that to me is just travesty. That to me is wrong. And uh, again, I hope to have conversations with those, with those people uh, in the future. But to say to people, I don't care what you eat as long as you keep your blood sugar below a certain value misses the point of food quality completely. And I don't think there's good evidence for it like that study I showed you. So let's move on to talking about evidence that I see that corroborates the notion that honey and fruit are not the same as sugar. I've done whole podcasts on this in the past. I'll continue to talk about it now. Here is a study from Rick Johnson, uh, and I'd love to have him on the podcast in the future. The effect of two energy-restricted diets, a low-fructose diet versus a moderate natural fructose diet on weight loss metabolic syndrome parameters, a randomized controlled trial. The basic takeaway is that weight loss was higher in the moderate natural fructose group and each out intervention diet was associated with significant improvements in secondary outcomes. So both diets were calorie restricted, but adding back in moderate amounts of natural fruit to a low fructose diet did not abrogate any of the benefits in terms of metabolic syndrome in these patients. If you look at the actual data here, you will see that the amount of fructose they were consuming from fruit is significant. So this is the uh, number of calories from fruit on these different diets. So on the 1500 kcal diet, there were 480 calories from fruit. On an 1800 calorie diet, there were 540 calories from fruit. Uh, like 30-ish percent on both of these diets of their calories were carbohydrates from fruit. That's a lot of fructose didn't result in any changes in their metabolic parameters or loss of any of the benefits 
of the overall process fructose reduction, which is probably why we see results like this in animal models. Substituting honey for refined carbohydrates protects rats from the hypertriglyceridemic and peroxidative effects of fructose. I would love to see the study in humans. I would love to see honey and fructose head to head. They're not the same. They don't behave the same in animal models. They don't behave the same in human trials. Look at this human trial on red orange juice. Red orange juice improves endothelial function and inflammatory markers in adult subjects with increased cardiovascular risk. What about all the fructose in this? What about all the postprandial glycemic index spiking of blood sugar? Don't worry about it. Seven-day consumption of red orange juice ameliorates endothelial function, reduces inflammation in non-diabetic subjects with increased cardiovascular risk. This is a randomized controlled trial in humans. Where are the harms of fructose? This doesn't even really have fiber in it. And there are many in the space um, who would say, okay, fruit is fine. Uh, Robert Lustig was recently on a podcast saying, you can eat as much fruit as you want. It's the fiber that's beneficial. But then you see studies like that with red orange juice there's no fiber in red orange juice. I don't think it's the fiber. I just think that fructose performs very differently in an informational matrix. This is a little hand wavy, I know, but we don't fully understand this in nutrition, but it appears to be the case. Fructose performs very differently in those matrices of whole foods than it does in isolation. Don't have processed sugar, but don't fear fruit and honey. 